Sobering remarks from the nation's leader as he officially opens the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative. I'm Clint Watson. We'll tell you all about it coming up in the Bahamas tonight. A local banker embroiled in a worldwide scandal. And in sports, cup races underway in Long Island. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Prime Minister calling for greater collaboration between national security forces as he declares more must be done to address crime in the Bahamas and the region. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. The nation's leader was officially opening the high-level national security meeting between the Bahamas regional heads and the United States of America through the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative Forum at the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island. When he made that passionate plea, Prime Minister Christie linked the murder rate to the gun smuggling trade. And as Clint Watson tells us tonight, the Prime Minister acknowledged the work done to combat the crime problem while he also chided the USA for its role in feeding crime throughout the region. We can do more and we can do better and we must. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie departed from his prepared text to the region's national security officials to speak from his heart on what he termed a frustrating crime dilemma out of control that in his view can be dealt with more effectively. Quoting that at times he walks on eggshells when crime grips the nation, he minced no words saying the division between police and military forces must end. And the eggshells is a reference to the divisions that exist between the military establishment and the police establishment. We do not have the right when it comes to protecting the people of the country to allow military lines and police lines and professional lines to divide us and prevent us from spontaneously and pragmatically shifting to the priority, stop the madness. We don't have the right when it comes to solving and challenge the challenges of our country to sit down, uniformed, and talk about traditionally you don't do this and traditionally you don't do that. The Prime Minister is very concerned that facilitating many of these violent crimes, especially murders, is the influx of smuggled guns now on the streets. In fact, while acknowledging the work the United States of America continues to do to help the region fight crime through the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative, Mr. Christie, on the other hand, chided them for the manufacturing of guns, which makes its way to island nations in the Caribbean. You're a country that produces these guns that end up taking innocent lives and causing terror in our communities. But you become more proactive in controlling the export of these guns. But as Prime Minister, I place before you an extraordinary sense of urgency. We call for a more robust surveillance and reconnaissance measures to be instituted. Once again, he reiterated that high youth unemployment in the region is a breeding ground for increased crime. We must recommit ourselves to save the young, to engage the young, and rid them of the hopelessness and despair. They must be trained and be able to do productive work. That is the underlying message of all that we will say today in our discussions. Now the Prime Minister says the Bahamas is ready to play its part. He says they are grateful for the CBSI initiative and they plan on supporting any effort to eradicate crime in the region. However, he continues to stress that if we don't address the joblessness and hopelessness of youth in the region, we ignore it to our peril. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News.
Severely deficient and highly vulnerable to fraud. That's how an Auditor General's report described the Free National Movement government's 52-week job program. The report was tabled in Parliament last night, and Jared Higgs has more. The Auditor General's report, tabled yesterday in the House of Assembly on the Free National Movement's 52-week jobs program, painted a picture of one that was wrought with vulnerabilities and deficiencies. We reached out to both the Speaker of the House, the Honorable Dr. Kendall Major, as well as the Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, Member of Parliament for Sanan, Hubert Chipman. The Auditor General uh, did what he uh, should do according to the Constitution, uh, 136.4, to without undue uh, delay uh, uh, give a copy to the to Speaker. I was provided with a copy, and, and as soon as my earliest opportunity, which was yesterday, I, I tabled it. And so this was the first copy, uh, apparently, that speaks to the, uh, the this term of the government, which is 2012 to 2013. And so there's a lot of information in there, and certainly the, the PAC is free to, to do its work that it's, that it's been called to do. And, uh, I can't offer an opinion uh, or say anything about the Auditor General's report. I received it today morning in the House of Assembly. I haven't had an opportunity uh, to go through it. I probably would be able to get through it sometime next week as I'm in the process of uh, preparing my budget communication. So, and uh, we do a the public accounts committee meeting this morning on the way forward. But outside of that, I can't offer anything else right now in order to general report. We also asked both parliamentarians about the much talked about urban renewal report. While Chipman says he did not have a comment, Dr. Major says he expects a report will be given. We we'll just have to see how that plays out. The, the expectation is that the minister responsible would view the report, of course, uh, take cognizance of it, and, and then in the, at the appropriate time, table it so that it can then be part of the investigative uh, process of the PAC. The Auditor General came under fire for a report that he released on urban renewal, citing concerns with the operation of programs from the department. The House Speaker told the PAC to hold off on a planned investigation until a report was tabled in the House of Assembly. Jared Higgs, ZNAS Network News. The Minister for Financial Services, the Honorable Hope Strawn, described the 2015-2016 fiscal plan as a people's budget. Noting that unemployment remains high, Strawn said she gives her approval to the $20 million for the Urban Renewal Youth Program. Getting down to the business of her ministry, Strawn laid out her ministry's endeavors ranging from FACTCA legislation to China's role in the future of the financial services industry. The opportunity to establish a Bahamian RMB center is a significant win for the Bahamas that will further cement our position as the leader in the region for financial services. It would, almost, it would also assist in increasing trade between China and the Bahamas, and indeed the region, by enabling China-Bahamas trade to be, to, 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 to be denominated in Chinese RMB and Bahamian dollars, rather than the current practice of using U.S. dollars as the intermediate currency. The deputy leader of the Free National Movement, Peter Turnquist, spent his budget contribution questioning several elements of government's fiscal plan. But while he commended government on some decisions, for example, the phased implementation of national health insurance, he insisted on changes such as this one to the gaming laws. The domestic gaming industry ought to, be, ought to have the same privileges as the foreign-owned gaming houses. Why should the Bahamians be treated any differently? Why should they be taxed more than the foreign-owned entities while not being allowed to access those same foreign dollars? Stubbs back in Court of Appeal, find out what he was asking for. And then find out why she's back in court. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. The of the news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter, designed for extra miles. 